stop using basic fonts as logos and here's how you can customize them instead. Fonts straight from the menu make your logos look boring and today I'm going to show you exactly how I customize existing fonts to create unique standout logos in a few minutes. And of course we're going to use ChatGPT to help me figure out what the brand name should be. Okay cool I'm going to ask Chat to give me five options of a three worded brand name. Bold and Boundless, Muse by Moonlight, these all sound like movie names but I really like Muse by Moonlight. Okay, so we have a lot of different keywords and phrases to work with. We have dreamy, feminine and delicate, artistic and inspirational. So immediately I'm thinking of script fonts, you know, something which is maybe a handwritten font. Mm, definitely serifs to give a more classic, elegant feel to it. And then just I'm imagining a lot of slants, a lot of like tapered edges. And these are the kind of design references that are forming in my head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a mind map around the brand name. Cool. So I mean, this is useful because you want to know what keywords you are wanting to emphasize and wanting to capture when you're designing a word mark. So this does not look like a map, but at least I have all my keywords on a page. And then now I'm going to go and shortlist some fonts. So usually I like to check out Adobe because I have a subscription to it and I can use it for free. Cool. So now we're in Adobe and I'm going to go to browse all. And I'm going to type the brand name Muse by Moonlight. I'm also thinking, and this is a signature thing that I do, I love to mix two different styles of fonts to capture two different types of personalities. So going back to Adobe, I'm going to type Moonlight. And I am going to uh, click on italics at the bottom over here. So what I love about Adobe fonts is you can shortlist and filter out all of the different characteristics you want from a font, you know, properties classification so I'm selecting italics and then just kind of quickly go through all the different options cool and then now I'm gonna check what we have in the serif library so these are a bit too sharp I do want something a bit softer so you know usually I tell people I go through like 500 or 800 fonts and it seems a bit excessive but let's do the maths together okay right now they're shortlisting 37 pages and on one page, we have one, two, three, four. And then if I open my calculator, 12 into 37, we already have 444 fonts. And that's just one category of fonts. So easily it can be 500 plus. That's just a fun fact for you. Okay, so now I'm opening Adobe Illustrator. I usually just have my artboard set to 1920 by 1080. There's nothing specific. You can do whatever you'd like. And I am going to just dump all of the stuff that I had in my previous slide into Illustrator. So I usually like to put my work on Adobe XD and then all of the working files and all of the editing onto Adobe Illustrator just to make it easier for me. But I anyways dump all of that information into Adobe Illustrator as well. And I've also shortlisted my fonts. So... Okay, so these are the fonts that I have shortlisted from going through 500-ish plus fonts. And immediately what catches my eye is this. I like the G over here. And I like how these curves are quite gentle. And I do love these, this M. So maybe we can like combine the two together to create something a bit more new. And these are nice, but I just feel like in terms of legibility, it might be tricky to read for most people. So as much as I would love to work with them, we're getting rid of you. And we're kind of just focusing on these two. So there's also this that I like. And I'm going to see what I like from each one. So I like to just kind of extract each, um, each letter from the fonts that I'm working with. So I love the M over here. So we can get rid of that. Over here, I like the, I like all of the letters. So I'm just gonna get rid of the M. So we've kind of shortlisted the two or three types of main typefaces you wanna work with. Go back to the notes and kind of just remind myself, what are we trying to create? So thoughtful and personal. I'm thinking something that needs to be soft romantic and mystical. So mystical for me also kind of reminds me of whimsical. So again, but maybe a bit more exaggerated and dreamy and ether ethereal. So dreamy also does feel like this very magical, exaggerated space. So I am going to go back and 
I feel like I love this, but it does feel a bit more classic. And I think this would suit the brand overall. Now let's go and figure out what we're balancing with. So the Muse by. So initially I was thinking, could this be a sans serif font? But the more that I'm thinking about the brand, I really think it needs to be a serif font, but just hidden hints of the serif strokes, not as exaggerated. But for, I feel like we need to fix this. So I think there's too much spacing. I generally like to reduce spacing between letters. I think it just m makes it look a bit more intentional. Um, and then I still like this M from the previous font. So I'm just gonna first adjust the spacing and maybe make that height the same like that. And so we have something similar. But I feel that this L, this curve of the L needs to match the M because right now there feels like a disconnect. So then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just extract the L and I'm gonna outline it so I can make the changes. So, so you go to, you click it, you go to object and expand and then do the same thing for the other letter. And so we have our letters. Uh, you can see that's kind of broken down. So you just want to go and open the Pathfinder. So go to Window, Pathfinder, and just the Shape Modes, just click Unite. So now that's all united together. So to make everything balanced, what I do is I kind of change this to another color. So that when I'm putting it on top, I make sure that, you know, they're kind of linked and they're together and now I want to erase this part of the M. So what I'm going to go do is there is something called the shape eraser tool, which is shift and E. And that means I can just simply click on the letter and erase the things that I don't need. But I'm still keeping the red letter on top because I want to know where that placement is going to be. And also sometimes if you, if it makes it easier, get a ruler in place. So you have all the letters in, in check. So now that we have erased a bit, I am going to switch this to black. And this does definitely feel a bit more united. I'm just gonna adjust the height and maybe just like make it a bit more closer. And it doesn't matter if that sticks out because I think that actually works fine for the brand. I do feel that I wanna make sure that this M, this point of this M is at the same level as the bottom. And you can see now the difference between the two M's. Definitely this M now feels like it's part of the brand and I really like it. And what I do once I like something is, first of all, just keep it, keep the original in place in case I ever wanna mess around with it. Then when I like the final thing, I'll just hit Unite again and then we have our final final M. So then again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the height of everything and see if they all have the same letters. But you can see that if I zoom in, you know, like all the letters are just not balanced properly at the bottom. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to vertically align bottom, it's like that option. And so you could see that shift that happened. And basically, I just want to find a common ground for all these letters because some are hovering, some are not. And if I zoom in, you can see that. So an easy way to do this is sometimes you hit Command Y to see the outlines of shapes. And I like to do these like small fixes and just make sure that all of these letters are resting on a co common. And I feel that most people don't realize this. Like you just think that the fonts, the way they are, are perfect itself, but not all the time. And then even I want to do the same thing for the top. So sometimes I can just arrange and adjust the whole letter. And that is now looking good. All the letters are balanced. There is its proportion. And now we have our new customized typeface. Okay, so I'm going to paste this on a brand new board. So I'm not going to get distracted by everything else. And now we have to figure out what type of font is going to suit the Muse by. And then we're going to think about the sizing as well. So I'll kind of just duplicate a lot of different options and just play around with sizing. At this point, I'm just seeing if things look balanced or not. And I just kind of, you know, my artboards always look really messy and I'm not too concerned about it because nobody usually sees that. And just make your artboard bigger and bigger as you work along. Now, 
that I've finalized the sizing, I'm just going to center a line and now I'm going to figure out what fonts. So again, I'm just going to duplicate and I'm going to shortlist some serif fonts. I know that I really want to work with serifs. So I'm just going to go and see what's in my existing library. So I'll go and hit filters and select under classification, we have serif. And these are all of the serif fonts I have in my library and I'm pretty sure I'm going to find something really nice over here. Okay, so these are the fonts that I've shortlisted and let's go through them together. So this is by far my favorite and what I like if I like something, I'll just like shift to the side. Then this, I just feel like it's just a bit masculine because we have these like thicker edges. So not a fan. This is quite nice, but it's not as nice as the original. Over here, I feel like the B was, you know, whimsical as well. It had a dreamy like thing, but what kind of irks me about the B is it feels very trendy. And I've noticed this in a lot of Pinterest trends. And right now in the brand design community, everybody uses this like really wavy letter form. So as much as I like it, I don't want the brand to feel very trendy and I want it to feel timeless. I like this because the thickness balanced the thickness over here. But again, it just feels a bit predictable and nothing unique. So going back to my favorite, I am going to center align it. But I feel that the Muse by feels too tall. So I want to shorten it and I want to make Moonlight the main character of this logo. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to expand and I'm just going to actually just shorten it. And also another way to see how things look good or not is you want to have it in inverse. So you know, black and white. And here you can see that it's looking really, really nice. I'm actually really happy with it. So now that I've designed the word mark, I want to make sure that it looks good against the brand color palette. But this is a logo exercise. So I'm just going to go on Pinterest and just type midnight color palette and just use that as reference. So here I've swatched the colors and I'm just going to paste and just see how the word mark looks like against the color palette. And I usually like making word marks really small just because it feels a bit more intentional rather than filling up the space because that just tends to look really cheap and amateurish. The exaggerated M balances with the rest of the letters. You know, we have the curves of the N and the I and the G and the H and the T. But there's this softness that balanced with the sharpness of the serifs. And so we have that premium factor that comes in that you would see in a jewelry brand. Now let's go and put this onto mockups to really bring this brand to life. So I have a subscription with the premium version of Freepik and that's where I usually find my mockups. So I'm just gonna type jewelry mockup and let's see what we have. Also when it comes to mockups, it takes time to find a really nice one. Like, you know, sometimes again, things look tacky, they look cheap, and it's really hard to get a mock-up and most people, again, don't realize that. Okay, cool, so now I'm gonna go edit one of the mock-ups. I'm just gonna drop in my logo, and yeah, this is how it's looking like. And yeah, that's how I mix and match different font styles and then I get them onto Illustrator and then I customize them further to make something that is truly unique and special to the brand. If you learned something new, I'd love to know in the comments or if you want to learn something else, let me know that as well. And as always, please don't forget to like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.